Hello, good evening. Um, I'm part of the group No Means No locally in Gibraltar. And I'll give you a bit of background how we started. And we started as an online chat on Facebook. Uh, there was a group of us that weren't happy with sentences being handed out here for perpetrators of sexual violence. Um, and in many cases where um, certain charges were dropped. So we got together and we decided to set up a Facebook page to make people aware of what sexual violence is. And we decided to share stories anonymously, uh, stories of people that had experienced sexual violence in Gibraltar. Uh, we got many likes after a few days and we had a bit of um, some heated debates online as well, because I think um, there was this belief that sexual violence doesn't happen in Gibraltar. You know, it's a very safe place where the children, everybody knows everybody. But Gibraltar is just a microcosm of, of the world. And whatever happens out there also happens in Gibraltar. So then we decided to form um, an association and we held an AGM on the 10th of October. And we had lots of survivors, victims of sexual violence present. And we managed to get some feedback from them from the way they were treated at court, like Tamsin said earlier, uh, being seen as manipulators, which is something that in the AGM I posted, um, I got sent a report from um, rape crisis in the UK. And those are attitudes that we share with Bolivia. Now Bolivia, you know, is not, you'd say it's not really a developed country or not in the way that Gibraltar definitely portrays itself, but, that said, in the courtrooms, we are treating survivors or victims of sexual violence in a way that they treat them in Bolivia. So something is not quite right with the way we, we view um, victims of sexual violence. So after our presentation, we realized that there was a need for a support group uh, for people that had experienced it because they had nowhere to turn. Um, and then we decided to meet with police and ask for guidelines and see what procedures happen when someone reports a, a rape. And it really was like opening a can of worms, to be honest. And at times it's been really overwhelming because um, there just seemed to be a very relaxed attitude around sexual violence in Gibraltar. Um, there's a lot of uh, victim blaming. Uh, and when I speak to people about it, they say, yeah, but you know what that girl wears? Or do you know her father's a drunk? Or and there's always seems to be an excuse, um, f you know, f from the perpetrator, you know, um, and it's really something that I think is going to take a long time to change these attitudes, um, but hopefully we've made a start. Um, so after AGM, like we met up with the police, and there was many things we wanted statistics. We've got no statistics here in Gibraltar. Um, I'm still waiting. This was in, um, it was actually in October that I met with police. Um, I keep emailing them now and again. Hopefully I'll get some statistics. Um, and, and then there was other things um, that, uh, like sentencing, we thought it was very weak. And then they follow UK sentencing guidelines, which are not the best. Um, we also discussed a jury system and whether a jury system in cases like this works in Gibraltar because you're going to know somebody and what they would like to see. So whether a three judge system would work better than having um, a jury. We also spoke about rape kits because at the moment in Gibraltar, if you've been raped, the only way you can have access to a rape kit is if you report it to the police. Now the rape in itself can be, is traumatic and then having to report it to police, and that in itself is another trauma. Um, so you cannot even gain that forensic, crucial forensic evidence in many cases. Um, and that's the only way at the minute you're able to get a rape kit in Gibraltar. Um, and I think um, it should be readily available, you know, that people can access it and get that uh, forensic evidence as soon as possible. So if the person then chooses to take it forward and report it to the police, then the evidence is there. We also asked about guidelines and they had no guidelines about how they deal with uh, people that have experienced sexual violence. They go on a case to case basis. 
which is great. It makes it sound very person-centered, but how can you evaluate your guidelines? How can you see, oh, we did this wrong last month, let's try and improve in this way? You cannot. You have to have certain guidelines and update them regularly. Um, you cannot have things on a case-by-case, -case, you know? It seems to me, I don't know, a bit unprofessional, really. Um, and then we asked what happens when victims report, and again, the case-to-case, -case, whether they were offered counselling, and then they referred to social services, and then they make the, the call of, you know, how, how urgent it is, and when they will see a counsellor. Um, we also asked about video recording and protection of the uh, victims. And we also spoke about uh, sex offenders and what rehabilitation they have in place. And they assured us that they do have rehabilitation. Um, so, so, you know, we've had lots of concerns from people um, in the community. Um, we've had concerns where people have rang the police when suddenly a, a young woman has plucked up the courage to go to the police and they said that there's nothing they can do or they've rang the perpetrator up and asked them to come in. So the perpetrator has um, had time to delete anything he had on his phone or provide an alibi or do whatever. The element of surprise was completely gone. Um, so it really has been, like I said, you know, opening a can of worms because every time that we look at one issue in detail, we think, oh my goodness, you know, there's like another maybe 15, 20 points that need to be addressed. Um, we would like better sex education in school as well. Um, I don't think, I mean, we've had people share stories on our group and they've said on our Facebook page, and they've said it's only through the Facebook page that I've realized I was sexually assaulted or that I was raped. And these are women in their late 30s that should know um, you know, when something is consensual and something isn't. So we're really talking basics here, you know. It's not that we want, you know, it, it is the, the basics, it seems to me, are not here in our, in our society. So, so obviously we have some, well, we've got many aims, you know, because you can pick and choose, really, the, the list is endless. But in particular with the courts, we want some legislation changes. There's a loophole where if a, if a man is under the age of 24 and he believes that the, the victim, being a woman, f for argument's sake, um, is, under the age, is above the age of 16, then that's a defence. So if he thinks she's above 16, that's good enough. And we'd like that changed. We'd like change as well. There's a PACE, it's called uh, Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, where basically in Gibraltar, if someone has an interview by police, they're arrested, they're allowed to say, no comment, no comment. They're allowed to do that in the UK too. But when it gets to trial, they will be asked by the prosecution why they chose to say no comment. Whereas here, it has no weight. You can say no comment, no comment, no comment. And then you can go get an alibi and do whatever you like and it will hold no weight. So we would like that change. With the police, we would like some, um, the safeguarding unit to have some set guidelines in writing, like I said earlier, so they can update stuff. Um, and we would love statistics. I mean, the only one we've had recently was, um, I think it came out in Parliament, and it was something like 27 people had reported uh, sexual violence, and only seven uh, people had been charged. Um, we did speak with police and they said that obviously it, there were, some of them were still being investigated. But even if some of them are still being investigated, if 27 people have had the courage to come forward and say, this has happened to me, you know, we should be doing better than only seven being charged. I mean, that to me is really poor. Um, so, so we would like also, you know, um, rape kits to be available. Um, perhaps not the police, maybe youth clubs, maybe private clinics. And other issues are there's no first response team. So if someone is raped, no one is really trained in dealing with it uh, from a supportive perspective. In the UK, there are uh, people called ISVA, ISVA, and the Independent Sexual Violence Advisors. And they offer counselling and they also uh, support you in the emotional side and the ordeal of perhaps going to trial or, or not going to trial. Um, so, so we would like to see something like that here in Gibraltar as well, because at the minute, uh, young people 
are being sexually assaulted, they are being raped, it is happening in Gibraltar, and they've got no one to turn to. And I always, I mean, I've my background is a bit in mental health as well as a therapist, and I find that in some cases, people that do develop mental health issues and people that do develop a drug and alcohol uh, addiction, underneath that, there tends to be sexual violence, whether perhaps when they were children or later on as an adult, and that is something that is not really, um, is people don't really talk about that, you know. There is a percentage of people with mental health issues and with drug and alcohol issues that have been sexually abused in childhood, that they've been raped as teenagers, they might have been raped in a marriage. So, you know, it's something that does happen. So obviously we have a lot of work to do. So if anybody wants to join us in our plight, you know, you're more than welcome. So thank you.